Hey, Jason from National Camera Exchange here. In this tutorial, we're gonna look at the Lightroom's capability with uh, adding a graduated filter or a gradual change and the radial filter, which are local uh, adjustment tools in Lightroom. So with this image here, you can see I have a lot of sky showing in this image. And this is a perfect place to see some of that, um, to see some of that exposure change where I have good exposure on the ground and on the sky I could make some different changes and this is a perfect example of when I might use a graduate filter so the local adjustments are up here at the top of our um, adjustment panel over to the right and you can see here in this one we're gonna be working with these two here the graduated um, filter and then the radial filter so the graduated filter here opens up this drop down in which you have a lot of local adjustments you can apply. So we can we can actually apply a lot of the adjustments we've talked about in other tutorials that we apply to the overall image, but here we can apply them to a speci specific part of the image. Anywhere between white balance information, exposure information, and shadows, all the way to actually adding sharpening and noise to a specific area of the image as well, or noise reduction. Um, and so the way you use the graduated filter is you, once it's selected, you move over to the image and you start, you click on an area of the image and you drag away from the area that you wanted affected. So you see how I'm dragging up and I'm affecting the ground. In this case, I actually should have dragged down and you can see I'm dragging, um, I've got this effect that is affecting the top of my image, and then as the further I drag, the more of a gradual shift from effect to no effect I get um, here. So it gradually changes on the top line, or from the top line here, it gradually changes from full effect up here to no effect down here. And you can see, in this case, I already had um, previously done an exposure shift in one of these tools and it saves that change. So a couple things, if I wanted to reset the exposure shift, I can either double click on exposure and that goes to zero. But let's say I didn't do that here. So we were at negative 85. I can also hold the alt key down and click on that reset option. That resets all the controls at once. So here I can um, drop my exposure, which is one thing I frequently am doing on this guy. So I can drop my exposure a, a hair. I don't wanna go too far in this particular image. I can also go back up to um, my shadows or my highlights so I can raise my highlights, which is gonna make my sky a little bit, or my clouds a little bit brighter. Um, I can raise the shadows. Um, you can see that it helps some of the effect on the trees. And then I can add some clarity. You know, if I want the sky to appear to be more sharp, I can add a little bit of clarity. Or another thing I might do is add more saturation. And so this is gonna bring out some of the blues in the sky. Um, but I have to be careful because my effect is actually, you know, down here. So let's actually, so I go back to this node here and I can actually drag it up. So I'm moving that filter effect a little bit higher. So we'll drag that so it isn't affecting uh, my subject here quite as much. So we'll move it up here. And so I can continue to raise that saturation, which is gonna bring out some of the blues in the sky without affecting the greens down here or the skin tones here. Um, down here, this is something that we don't have really in any other area in Lightroom. And we also have this option to put a gradual like color filter on. So if I actually really wanna make my sky even more blue, um, I can go in here. And this is similar actually to split toning, I guess you get something similar to this so I can See how my sky is getting more and more blue and or if I shift over here, the entire thing turns red and it starts to look unnatural. But um, so you have to be a little careful when you use this. And I'm just I'm still holding my mouse key down as I drag around to show different areas. And so but adding a little bit of blue in something like this might work out. And so I'm just going to leave it there. If I want, I can also use this slider here to go more or less blue than what I actually first placed my spot at. So. Then I can exit out of here. So I, I like that. Um, that's one way to get that effect. Um, I can also run a separate graduation going up, which is gonna affect my bottom. I can put as many graduated filters on this picture as I want, and so sometimes you end up stacking them. The radial filter here is very, very similar, um, and what type of options you have here, as you can see, it still has me set at negative 85, and it has this clarity up. 
some of these things that I, I were um, still there. Again, if I hit Alt, I can reset this. But let's say like here, um, if I actually click on it, here she's slightly overexposed. If I zoom in here, um, you can kind of see that. Whoop, I didn't mean to start my um, radial. If I hit the delete key, it gets rid of that one I just did with a cool little exploding graphic, which is awesome, I guess. Um, but here, I, if, I, if I click and I drag, I can kind of see how I can size it to just affect her for the most part. And then over here at the bottom of all these adjustments, it adds this little thing here. So I can feather the change. So we talked about that in some other tutorials and how that feathering adjusts like how many pixels or how far away from my, you know, my circle here, that effect kind of starts to gradually change from not affecting to fully affecting. Kind of like in the, um, um, the uh, uh, graduated filter, it's, it's like how far that graduation is. So here I'll usually leave my feathering somewhat high here so that, that it's harder to tell that that change is happening. And here I can take down my highlights a little bit. Um, well, so here you can see I'm actually affecting my sky and whatnot, the rest of my picture. If I, the other thing down here, I can invert my mask and now I'm affecting her and not the surrounding area. So if I take my highlights down, um, maybe bring my exposure down and you can start to see how that's happening just on her. But you can see how I am seeing a little bit of it in my sky. So you have to be careful because I'm still not being super precise about where my brush is happening. So, but I can kind of fine tune this area that's just in her. And so this is another area. I'm gonna zoom in again. If I hold my space bar key down, I can click and kind of zoom in. I can also add some sharpening, some, some very selective sharpening in this area. And so I can add this sharpness right here. So I'm gonna sharpen up just this area of the image and leave kind of that out of focus background, that softer background without any sharpening. And you know, if I wanted to, if I had some noise, I could uh, um, leave some noise. Or again, I could add like a color shift. So maybe she's a little too warm and I could selectively add like some blue, which is the opposite of, you know, kind of warmth there. So there you have both the graduated filter and the radial filter. Thanks for watching. For more tutorials, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us know in the comments below what other tutorials you'd like to see. Until next time, I'm Jason with National Camera Exchange.